chapter 20. If you'll look at the last two verses with me one more time, please. It says, In many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. If you notice the sign when you came in this morning, it says that Jesus is the only Christ. This is important. The concept of the Christ to come, the King, the Savior has been promised. He is the only Messiah, the only Savior that we have. This book right here, the book of John inside of the Bible, is the foundation of salvation. Many people that dispute the Scriptures will often go to an obscure verse in James or in Hebrew, which is written to those that are saved, and they'll pick one verse out and they'll say, well now see, you have to be a good person to go to heaven. But the Bible couldn't be any more clear. Salvation is by faith alone in the Lord. His name is Jesus as the Son of Man, 100% flesh. He is the Son of God, 100% God. He is our Christ. That means He's our Savior, our Messiah. There is only one Christ. There is only one way to heaven, and that is through the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to understand that the book of John being this foundation of salvation is if anybody ever takes you to a verse and they say, well, what about this verse? You'll say, well, let's go back to the foundation. Because if you notice, this book says that in the book of John, it was specifically written for this one thing. That you might believe that Jesus is the Christ. And that believing you would have eternal life. These are the promises that we look forward to. This is the foundation. This is what we trust in. We build all of our faith upon this concept in this doctrine. This morning I'd like to talk about the doctrine of Christ. Listen, if you call yourself a Christian, you must understand the biblical doctrine of of Christ. There are many people that have a variation or a perversion of the doctrine of Christ and let me tell you, they're going to miss heaven. This is important. I want you to understand the power because you know, we live in a day where people say there are many Christs. Just about every mainstream religion, and I mean every false, unbiblical religion, is looking forward to another Savior. The New Age movement calls it Christ consciousness, where there are many ascended masters at different times that come in to save the world. That's what the Buddhists teach and believe. The Mormons are looking for the same thing. The Muslims are teaching the same thing. Judaism is teaching the same thing. Even Catholicism today, they say there are many ways to heaven, it's not all through the Lord Jesus Christ. I want you to understand, Jesus is the only Christ. And if you don't believe that, you're not saved. I understand that's a strong statement. Your salvation is not dependent upon my opinion of you. Your salvation is dependent upon your view of Jesus Christ, who He is, what He did, and whether or not you've taken the gift of God which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Right. There are not multiple ways to heaven. There are not multiple salvations. There are not multiple Christs. There's one way. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. If you would, go to 2 John chapter 1. We're going to come back to John. We're going to be primarily in John this morning. But go to 2 John chapter 1. This is essential. Just yesterday, one of the men in the church shared with me about another one of these mainstream Hollywood conversions. Oh, did you hear of this actor so-and-so? Now listen, there's been a lot of them in Hollywood who claim the name of Christ. But let me tell you this. They don't claim the name of Jesus. They'll say, oh yeah, I, I've received Christ and I got baptized. I've said this before and it means a lot. Your opinion of Jesus is the most important thing on this earth. Everybody has heard the name of Jesus. Probably everybody in the world. Some countries, it's illegal to preach Jesus. If you believe that Jesus is the Christ... The only Christ, the son of David, that's biblical Christianity. 
the thing that was shared with me yesterday was about this man named Russell Brand. I don't know if you know who he is. If not, don't worry about it. I'm not really that interested in doing talking about who's popular or what Hollywood's doing. I really, I really don't even like getting too political, although I believe every Christian is political. John the Baptist lost his head preaching to a politician and setting him straight. I have no desire. I don't have a, a suicide complex. I hope I don't lose my head. But listen, I'm going to preach the gospel. I'm going to preach the word of God as God has given it to us. And I want to share this thought with you. Your opinion of the Christ is a salvational issue. I want to help you comprehend the biblical doctrine of Christ. The, the Bible re references it more than once. The doctrine of Christ. Of Christ is what it's called. Doctrine is a set of beliefs. This guy, Russell Brand, he made this big show. Oh, I went down and got baptized. You got baptized? Yeah, I've had this new birth experience. I've been revitalized because I understand the Christ. He won't say, I've trusted in the Lord Jesus Christ. He doesn't believe that Jesus died for his sins. But he wants to get Hollywood excited saying, oh, he's had some sort of a Christian conversion. Well, it's a false Christian conversion. You're in 2 John, right? If you will, look at verse number 7. Verse number 7. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. If you think that there's another Christ coming, you're a, de a deceiver or an antichrist. Anti does not mean um, opposed to, although the antichrist will be opposed to Jesus Christ. It means instead of. If you think that there's another Christ and it's not Jesus, then you're an antichrist is what he said. These are very condemning words. This is a very serious issue. Russell Brand is an antichrist. He says there's a Christ, and I've experienced it. The very next day after his conversion, where he baptized himself, I guess, uh, he, he gets on his mainstream, all of his social media outlets, and he's dealing tarot cards doing witchcraft, say, uh, I mean, he's, he's pulling up seducing spirits, and it's like, wait a minute, did he really have a conversion? And many of the false Christians of the world are saying, oh, cut him some slack, he's just a babe in Christ. No, he's got the wrong Christ, it's a false Christ. If you don't have Jesus as Christ, you're not saved, this is a big deal. Let's continue reading. Look at verse number 8. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Verse 9. Whosoever transgresseth, that's a sin, and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ, hath not God. Now the Bible couldn't be any more clear. If you're preaching a different doctrine of Christ, you don't have God at all. In fact, Look what he says as he continues. The Holy Spirit through the man John wrote this. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Now, who is the Son? Jesus. Who is the Son of God? Jesus who is the only begotten Son of God? Jesus. That is the Christ. He is the Christ. There is no other Christ. There is no one else to come. He has come. He paid for our sin. He came as a servant. And it's finished as far as salvation. Now let me tell you, He's coming back and there's going to be a resurrection and there's going to be a reward for His servants. Oh, and there's going to be judgment and wrath poured out on those that oppose Him as Christ or reject Him as the only Christ. Look what he says in verse 10. If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine. If anybody showed up in the church and they said, well, I'm a Christian, but I don't think Jesus was the Christ. Or I think there's another Jesus coming and he'll usher in a new golden age. I would say that is anti-Christ doctrine. That is called new age. That's Luciferian. That is anti-Jesus, anti-Christ. I'd say get out of here. That's wrong. This is a big deal. Notice what he says. He says, If there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speed. That means you don't bless somebody that rejects the Son of God, Jesus the Christ. Don't go around blessing somebody that's cursing the Christ or saying there's another Christ or it wasn't Jesus. You don't, oh, well, God bless you anyway. 
This is a, he says, don't hang out with them. Don't bless them. Look what he says in verse 11. For he biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. This is a strong statement. When the JWs come to your door, or when the Mormons come to your door, you should not bid them God's speed. You know, we say goodbye. That means God be with you. Like whenever I have interaction with one, I don't want to be rude. I don't want to be ugly. I want to get them saved. I want to use the Bible to do it. But what I don't want to do is say, oh, well, God bless you anyway, even though you don't have Christ. That would be wrong. This is important. You are a partaker of his evil deeds. You're blessing their evil deeds when you say, well, the Jehovah's Witnesses are okay. They're just a little mixed up on the doctrine of Christ. If you will, go to John chapter 5. Go to John chapter 5. We live in a time in our, in our world where the world is on the verge of another war, perhaps a world war, God forbid, a uh, civil war on our, our doorstep, God forbid. And it really concerns me because the state of churches in America have gone so liberal and they're, they're just so messed up and there's so much spiritual ignorance or uh, Bible ignorance. They don't know what the Bible says, but they can tell you what the news channel said about Christianity. I want to read an article, and it, it breaks my heart to read this. This is from a mainstream news outlet, and the title of it is, House GOP Passes Controversial Bill Labeling Certain Christian Scriptures as Anti-Semitic, Sparking Fears of Criminalizing Religious Beliefs. I've heard my whole life growing up in church that one day they're going to make the Bible illegal. I'm convinced today you don't have to make it illegal. When you make a cell phone so popular, nobody cares what's in the Bible. They're distracted by the next video, the next post, the next image of somebody. But this, they're actually talking about making the gospel illegal in America. I want you to, the doctrine of Christ is under attack. Now look, everything that's going on in the Middle East, that's a big old mess. And I'm going to tell you straight out, I am not for either side. As with any war, both sides are breaking the law and they're doing things that are ungodly and dehumanizing. Both sides are to blame in a certain regard. And you know what? Let them sort it out. We don't need to take American money. We're so far in debt. We're destroying our, our economy, giving away money to every country. We need to leave them alone and just let them settle it. That's my political opinion. But here now we have a problem because this is on your doorstep. This has been passed. Listen to this. The House of Representatives passed the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act, H.R. 6090, on Wednesday, which has sparked significant debate over the interpretation of religious text and the definition of hate speech. They're going to say in America that if you say Jesus is the Christ, then that's hate speech. This is where it's going. Yeah. Now, for those that don't know much about the Muslim religion, it was started by a pervert. It was started by a pedophile. The Catholic Church was behind it. It was started through the Jesuits. And they are expecting another Christ. They call it the Mahdi. It's this next big Savior, if you will, that will unite all of the religions. The Catholics, the Muslims, and Judaism are working together right now under the Abraham Accords to bring all three of those religions together against biblical Christianity. This is a big deal. The bill aimed at curbing hate speech amid heightened tensions on college campuses concerning Israel has been a significant majority of the public Republicans in support, while a coalition of Democrats and Republicans opposed it, citing free speech concerns. We know there's chaos in the schools. I, I would rather see them shut down. I mean, the, the Department of Education has absolutely failed us. They're making a bunch of God-haters, aren't they? People that believe that I came from a rock, I came from a worm, I came from a fish. The Bible says God created man, and if you don't believe that, you're in trouble philosophically. It passed with a vote, listen to this, 320 votes for the bill to 91 opposed. That's kind of a landslide, isn't it? 
This is a big deal, and I got to tell you, I'm fired up about it because Christianity is under attack, and it breaks my heart that Christians are supporting it. Christians are saying, well, we have to support Israel and whatever she does. And well, she's trying to set up another Christ. There, Jesus warned us that another would come in his own name. Luke 21 tells us that they will call you before synagogues and persecute you. It's the Antichrist. That's what's coming in the end. And Christians are saying, well, we got to support this. If they want to build the temple, if they want to start the sacrifice, if they want to set up their own king, if they want to run everybody off. And look, if the, if the nation state of Israel wants to wipe out all the Muslims, I'm not going to shed a tear other than they didn't hear Christ. The Muslims need to hear of Christ, that it's Jesus, and so, do, so does Judaism. They need to hear that it's Jesus Christ and Him alone. This is so important. Our country is under attack through our own elected officials, and the ones that claim to be Christian are the worst ones. They're preparing the way for the false Christ, the Antichrist. It's happening right now. They voted 320 to 1. The bill defines... Anti-Semitism broadly, which by the way, if you are an anti-Semite, if you hate anybody that's of the religion of Shem, that's racist and the Bible condemns racism. We're all of one blood. Every nation is of one blood. But I would also remind you, if you go to Webster's Dictionary and look up Semitism, it says, if you think the Semites are better than everybody else, that is called racism. So there's two sides. It's reverse racism is what it is, okay? I'm for neither side. They all need to hear the gospel. The bill defines anti-Semitism broadly, incorporating definitions provided by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance, including traditional anti-Semitic actions and accusations, such as those against the state of Israel. Critically, the bill makes it an offense. This is what has been passed. It makes it an offense to apply double standards to Israel or to accuse it of genocide. As far as I can tell, the truth is they've killed, the, what, who's been killed, who Israel has attacked has been 70% women and children unarmed. That's not right in war. But look, war is evil. I'm not for either side. I'm for the preaching of the gospel to the lost. I spoke about it recently when I went to New York a long time ago. I got off the subway and there was this vendor selling t-shirts. And he had that blasphemous picture of Jesus on the cross. Jesus is not on the cross. Okay, that's the Roman victory when they think they killed our Christ. No, you didn't. He's alive. But on the t-shirt it said, what would Jesus bomb? What would Jesus bomb? Well, Jesus wouldn't bomb either one. Now look, when he comes back and pours out his wrath, oh, there will be fire and hail mingled with blood coming out of heaven. That's going to happen. But right now, as Christians, we are not to advocate for bombing other countries to get our political way. It's not right. In fact, we read about it in Sunday school. Uh, he touched on Barabbas, the insurrectionist that fought off the Romans. It's not Barabbas Christ. It's Jesus Christ. He did it a different way. Barabbas was a murderer. He took innocent life. Jesus healed life, didn't he? He gave eternal life. Among the dissenting voices is Representative Majorie Taylor Green. I don't know who this is, who expressed concern that the bill's definition of anti-Semitism could potentially, listen to this, criminalize Christians for their religious beliefs, particularly narratives in the gospel regarding the death of Jesus Christ. Anti-Semitism is wrong. This is another quote. Or no, this is still her quote, I guess. Anti-Semitism is wrong, but I will not be voting for the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act of 2023 called H.R. 6090. Today, that could convict Christians of anti-Semitism for believing the gospel that says Jesus was handed over to Herod to be crucified by the Jews. Reading the Bible, preaching the gospel is becoming hate speech in America. It's passed the House of Representatives. Now it's headed to the Senate. Definition and examples adopted by the bill based on the IHRA are this, and I, I'll just read a couple. Uh, making stereotypical allegations about the Jews as such or the power of Jews as collective, such as especially but not exclusively the myth about a world Jewish conspiracy or the Jews controlling the media. 
economy, government, or other social institutions. You can't say, man, there's a conspiracy in the media, and I think it's, you can't say that. That would be hate speech. Accusing the Jews as a people or Israel as a state of inventing or exaggerating the Holocaust by saying, why are they using these numbers larger than what they originally reported? Here's another one. Accusing Jewish citizens of being more loyal to Israel than their own nation. Now, we in America, we have what used to be called the title of nobility. We forbade that when you're in America, France can't make you a noble in their country. You're supposed to be loyal to your country when you're a politician in this country. There are many politicians in the House and the Senate that are dual citizenship for Israel, and they're the ones voting for $100 billion to keep a war going, or to start a war and to send your children off there. Here's another one. Using the symbols and images associated with classical anti-Semitism, claiming the Jews killing of Jesus. If you claim that the Jews killed Jesus, that's hate speech in America. That's where they're going with this. Again, when they said anti-Semitism is wrong, I agree with that. Amen. We don't hate people based on their bloodline. And look, I hate the wicked religions. I hate Roman Catholicism, but when I meet a Catholic, I love them enough to preach the gospel. This is important. Here's another one. Drawing comparisons of contemporary Israel policy to that of the Nazis. By saying what the Nazis did, the Jews are doing the same exact thing. They're building walls, they're putting barbed wire, they're locking up people, they're killing innocent. You're not allowed to say that. Well, I mean, there are many people that make these, well, actually, here's what they did and here's what they did. Did you know that Orthodox Judaism is 100% opposed to Zionism? Zionism is a political movement that was started in the late 1800s. And in Judaism, there are many shades, just as there are with Baptists. You guys ever been to a Baptist church where you're like, I don't know if they're my kind of Baptist or not. You know what I'm talking about? There's many shades in that spectrum. Well, it's the same thing with Judaism. Orthodox is your traditional, and they are 100% opposed to the political Zionist movement where they want to build a temple and crown their king, the son of David. That is the agenda of Zionism, is to set up their Messiah. Orthodox Judaism is opposed to it, and they're literally going to say, well, you're a racist, and that's hate speech for opposing our political movement. This is kind of confusing when you get down to it. Like, half of Judaism disagrees. There's protests in Israel right now saying, stop the war. Why are we doing this? They're going to call them racist and say that's hate speech to not support the war. And guess what? They want to do the same thing in America. Only they're taking it a step farther. If you believe Jesus is the only Christ, they want to say that's hate speech. This is a big deal. Representative Matt Gates also criticized the bill, stating that it disregards the Constitution and the common understanding of words. Here's his quote. This evening, I will vote against the ridiculous hate speech bill. Remind, this is against Christianity. Hate speech bill called the Anti-Semitism Awareness Act. Anti-Semitism is wrong, but this legislation is written without regard for the Constitution, common sense, or even the common understanding of the meaning of words. It's written in such a vague way that they can begin to say whatever they want to call anti-Semitism, they can do it. If you don't vote for the war, then you're a racist. That's hate speech. The gospel itself would meet the definition of anti-Semitism under the terms of this bill. The bill says the definition of anti-Semitism includes contemporary example, examples of anti-Semitism identified by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. One of those examples includes claims of the Jews killing Jesus. The Bible is clear. There is no myth or controversy on this. Therefore, I will not support this bill. Gates cited scriptural passages to underscore his argument that the bill's broad definition of anti-Semitism could encompass fundamental Christian beliefs. And here's the verses he gave. Acts chapter 4. Be it known unto you all and to the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. 
1 Thessalonians 2, verse 14 through 16, For ye, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they please not God, and are contrary to all men, forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved. I find it interesting that Matt Gates, like him or not, he used a verse that says, the Jews are forbidding you to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved. And that's what this whole bill is about. Yeah. A law to say you cannot say Jesus is the only Christ or that the Jews can. I mean, it blows my mind. It's right here in Scripture. Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins always, for the wrath has come upon them to the uttermost. And we know that God poured out His wrath and judged Jerusalem and scattered them all. The early church, boy, they figured it out. They had all things in common. They sold their possessions. And they moved to Antioch. And then God destroyed the city. It was kind of interesting. Uh, Acts 3, verse 14 and 15. But ye denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life. Whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. The article goes on. It says, according to the chorus of concern, Representative Thomas Massey, Republican from Kentucky, criticized the bill for its vague definitions and potential constitutional conflicts. And here's his quote. The definition of anti-Semitism appears nowhere in the bill. Should people in America be prosecuted for saying these things in all contexts? I think not. This is a poorly conceived, unconstitutional bill, and I will vote no, Massey wrote. Listen, guys, Jesus is the only Christ. Amen? Amen. Jesus is the only Christ, and when the world receives another Christ that comes in His name, and they say, if we just persecute the Christians and get rid of them, we'll be all right. We can have our utopia. We can set up nirvana. Oh, it'll be a great place once we get rid of those Bible believers. They're trying to destroy the economy right now. Our own government is working on an implantable digital dollar to eliminate cash. The world government already exists in 10 nation confederations, exactly as the Bible foretold. There are 10 different regions globally. The world government is here. The United Nations has been around. It is a new world order. That's what President George Bush called it. George Bush Sr. called it that. Obama called it that. I mean, all the presidents call it a new world order. But, you know, there's a problem. Those that believe that Jesus is the only Christ, they are in the way of another Christ, aren't they? It doesn't fit their narrative. You're in John chapter 5. Look at this. Are you in John 5 with me? I want you to see the Word of God. John chapter 5, if you would, look at verse number 16. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him. Now, if you're not reading a King James Bible, guess what? The Catholic Bibles remove that part. They absolutely delete it. Just as the, the verse you were talking about this morning in Mark, they did the same thing. They delete it. Because he had done these things on the Sabbath day, but Jesus answering them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he had not only broken the Sabbath day, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Well, he is equal with God. I mean, doesn't he tell us in Philippians that he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, the Lord Jesus Christ, as our Savior? He is very God. He is I am. He is our Creator. He's our only Savior. In this same passage in chapter 5, look at verse number 42. But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. Jesus is foretelling the future. Go to, go to John chapter 7. Go to John chapter 7. Jesus told us this would happen. And it's literally happening in our government. They're making a law to make it illegal to say Jesus is the only Christ, to say that the Jews killed Jesus, which is just reading the Bible. John chapter 7, look at verse number 1. 
Of these things Jesus walked in Galilee, for he would not walk in Jewry because the Jews sought to kill him. If you would go back to John chapter 1. I'd like to just teach you the doctrine of Christ this morning. I'd like to just show you how important it is to be firmly rooted in what the Bible says about the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to encourage you in this. If you've trusted in Christ for salvation, you're His. You're His forever. I don't think that I could persuade you that there is no Son. If I held you down and twisted your fingers and say, tell me there's no sun rising, you'd say, you're an idiot. I know the sun's rising. Why are you hurting me? It's the same way once the Son of God has risen in your heart. Once you believe that Jesus is the only Savior, this is not a uh, a Christ consciousness, another great ascended master. That's what the Masons teach. That's what the Buddhists teach. That's what every false religion teaches. I'm here to tell you what the Bible teaches. There is only one Christ, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ. The Jews put him to death, and this is not an anti Semitic statement, it's a truth out of the scriptures. Jesus loved the Jews. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. He loved the Jews. He loved the Gentiles. He loved the Greeks. He loved the Romans. He died for their sin. Today, Jesus loves the Muslims. Many reject him. He loves Judaism, but today, many reject him. In John chapter 1, if you would look at verse number 17. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Look at verse 25. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptizest thou then, if thou be not that Christ, nor Elias, neither the prophet? You understand, baptism is a sign that you've received the Christ. You know, they were all baptized into Moses in the Old Testament. It tells us that in the New Testament. That was a picture of baptism. They were completely immersed or surrounded by the water. It was a picture of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ to come. They believed Christ. They got baptized. Well, today we have a New Age movement. They say, oh, I baptized myself and I believe in a Christ. Maybe he thinks he is a Christ. Maybe he thinks he is a God. Look at verse number 40 in chapter 1. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him. And Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, he first findeth his own brother Simon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which being interpreted is the Christ. Look at verse 49. Nathanael answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Thou shalt see greater things than these. And he said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is talking about Jacob's ladder. They saw Jacob's ladder. They called it the gateway to heaven. And they saw angels coming up and down. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's the king of the earth. He's the prince of all things. He owns it all. Go to John chapter 3. Go to John chapter 3. I'll be brief the next few minutes. I just want to share a few great, solid verses about the doctrine of Christ. What you have believed, that it's Jesus alone that can save you, is foundational, fundamental Christian doctrine. And if you think someone else can save you, you're not a biblical Christian at all. If you think another Christ is going to come and he's going to bring peace in the Middle East and the Catholics will get on board and Judaism will be behind it and the Muslims will be there, if you think that's of God, then you don't understand the warning that the, that the Bible has already given us about a false Christ that's ready to come. In John chapter 3, look at verse 15. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. There's only one way to everlasting life and that's faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. There are mainstream Christian preachers, John Hagee. He says, well, the Jews didn't reject their Messiah. He, Jesus wasn't even their Messiah. He's literally teaching today. He wrote a whole book about it saying that when the Jews will receive another Messiah that comes. Oh, no, no, no. Jesus wasn't the King of David for the Jews. He was just for the Gentiles. The Bible would contradict that 
You either have Jesus as your Christ or you have an antichrist. Look at verse 36. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. Those that reject Jesus as Christ, God's wrath will be poured out on them. There's hell to pay. My heart's desire is that Israel would be saved, and America would be saved, Jacksonville would get saved, the Muslims would get saved. Most people want their own way. They don't want the only way. Go to John chapter 4. Go to the next chapter. Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. John chapter 4, look at verse 25. I just want to show you the doctrine of Christ from the Scriptures. John 4, verse 25. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. He said, I am the Christ. You better figure it out. She was trusting in Christ to come. She understood the Old Testament promises. She was under the Old Covenant looking for Christ to come. And he said, here I am. I'm in front of you. I am the Christ to come. Listen, there is no more Old Covenant. There is no old, there's no salvation by being circumcised or killing a lamb. Jesus Christ Christ is your lamb. There is no circumcised by uh, salvation by keeping a Sabbath. He's the Lord of the Sabbath. First, First Corinthians 5 verse 7 tells us that Jesus is our Passover. I mean, it's done. He's finished the work for salvation. She understood this would happen. He said, I that speak unto thee am he. There's one Christ. His name was Jesus. Look at verse 29 in this passage. Come. This is her testimony. See a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? She's excited. The one we've been waiting for. He's here. Look at verse 42. And said unto the woman, Now we believe not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Go to the next passage. They got it. They said, Boy, what you said got us interested. If this is the Christ, I want to know it. I want to see him for myself. They said, Now we know this is the only Savior of the world. I believe that the devil is going to cause such chaos in the end times that everybody will be crying out for a savior and they'll take whomever it is. Every religion will get on board. There'll be a great falling away. Those you thought were Christian will say, no, no, don't you, have you seen the news? This guy, he's the savior. And those of you that have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you'll say, you can't deceive me. I know the truth. John chapter five, look at verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. I want you to understand it's Jesus that's going to resurrect you. It's Jesus that has the power over the grave. There is no other Christ. There's one Christ. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Go to the next chapter. Go to chapter 6. And oh, you understand what I just said is going to be considered hate speech one day. I'm praying that God would use his power and convict the hearts of these false Christians that are in, in our government right now. And he would just slap this bill down. It would be a wake-up call to Christians, which, by the way, you know, I thought we had a great governor. He's done a lot of great things. But unfortunately, he's already passed a bill very similar to this in Florida. But he did it from the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. He went, our governor went to Jerusalem to pass a bill saying, well, you can't talk about, about Jews. And listen, I don't want to talk bad about Jews. I don't want to talk bad about Muslims. I don't want to talk bad about Catholics. But when there's a problem with their doctrine, when they say there is another Christ, I'm going to tell you the truth of what the Bible says. Yeah. It's not a racist statement to say that the devil wants to set up his king over Israel. It's a fact. That's what the Bible's told us. In John chapter 6, if you would, look at verse 39. And this is the Father's will 
which hath sent me, that all of which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. It's Jesus that's going to raise us up. With the Old Testament states, it's Jesus that will call us out of the grave. Look at verse 47. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. What a beautiful promise. Go to chapter, you're in chapter 6, look at verse 68. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God. Go to the next chapter. I want you to understand if you've trusted in Christ for salvation, your name is written in the book of life. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, I think it's verse 5, is very clear. It will not be blotted out. It's in there. It's in there forever. You've trusted in Christ. I don't believe when you have the Holy Spirit inside of you that you can be deceived by a false Christ. Now, you can be deceived by a conservative so-called Christian politician or news media commentator that tries to persuade you it's your Christian duty to bomb people that disagree with you. But listen, don't buy into that. Focus on the gospel. It's the gospel that got you saved and it's the gospel that can get your neighbor saved. John chapter 7, if you would, look at verse 31. And many of the people believed on him and said, When Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than these which this man hath done? I mean, the volume, the magnitude, the amazing things that Jesus did, healing the lame and the blind and raising the dead and uh, turning a little bit of fish and bread into multitudes of fish. I mean, all these miracles that he did, they said, Is there anybody that's going to do more miracles than that? Go to the next chapter, John chapter 8. We're almost done. I appreciate your patience, and I hope that this is a blessing to you. I want to encourage you. You've discovered that there's one Christ, and his name is Jesus. And there are many people in the world that are confused on this, and they think, maybe there's another coming. And they're right. There is. But he's not truly the Christ. John chapter 8, if you would, look at verse number 56. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was... I am. One of the great I am statements that Jesus made, proclaiming his Godhood. Verse 59, Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Finally, go to John chapter 10 with me, and let's finish there. Go to John chapter number 10. John chapter 10, look at verse number 24. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. They wanted the Christ. They've heard of the Christ their whole life. And here it was. He says, Hey, if that's you, let us know. Would you show us? Would you tell us clearly? What does Jesus say? Verse 25. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You understand that all that the Father had given him were those that were saved under the old covenant. They, know, they knew the scriptures, they expected the Christ, and he didn't lose any of them. His sheep, as soon as they heard, wait, you're the Christ, it was 
It was evidenced through the power of the Holy Spirit and through the miracles and the fulfillment of all the many scriptures. They knew, those that were already saved under the old covenant, they knew when they were standing before Jesus Christ that he was the fulfillment of the old covenant and the bringing in of the better testament, the new covenant. They knew it. And so he's giving us that illustration here. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they Follow me. Finally, in verse 28, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Once you know that it's Jesus that's the Christ, you cannot unknow that. You can't unlearn it. You can't be convinced or persuaded. Now, let me tell you, the devil might whisper in your ear and say, Are you really one of his? Oh, you do all that stuff and you have those bad thoughts and you think things and say things that are, are you really one of his? The devil wants to get in your ear and lie to you. But once you know that it's Jesus that's the Christ, he says, you're in my hand now and I'll never let you go. What a beautiful promise. Verse 29, my father, which gave me them is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed unto you from my father. For which of these works do ye stone me? What a statement. Go back to John 20 where we started, if you would. Go back to John 20. Once you've trusted in Christ, once you've trusted in Jesus as the Christ, no man can pluck you out of his hand. If you think another Christ is coming and we should support him, you don't have God, you don't have the Father, you don't have the Son. This doctrine of Christ is to say that Jesus is the only Christ. He's the only Savior. He's the only way to have your sins forgiven. Where we started in verse 30, John 20, verse 30. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. I really believe that in the end times, Another man will come and say that he is God. He'll say he's the Son of God. He'll say that he's the Christ. He'll say that he's the Messiah, the Redeemer. He'll say that he's the Son of David, the prophesied one. And the whole world that's lost without Jesus as Christ will follow that man. The Bible warned us that Antichrist will come, but if you've trusted in Christ, then that makes you... A Christian. Aren't you thankful that you can understand the simple doctrine of Christ? There's only one Christ. He paid it all. He did all the hard work. All I had to do was trust Him and I'm forgiven. Listen, we need to wake up as Christians. We need to wake up other Christians and say, listen, I, I, I'm, I'm angry when I see the news of what's going on in our universities and in our government and in our spending and in our banking system and in Israel with Palestine. Man, I'm not happy about any of it. And I'm not a racist. I don't hate any of them. But I want you to understand that the Muslims are expecting their Christ. They call him the Mahdi. And the Jews that are called today that don't have the old or the new covenant, they're expecting their Christ and they're going to be opposed to each other until this man unites them and then all the religions will work together for Satan. I wish that we could wake up other Christians and say, hey, when's the last, what's the name of the last person you led to Christ? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I love you so much, and I just ask that you would help us to be an encouragement to the biblical Christians that we know that are confused by the news and the government. Lord, I do ask that you would continue to give us peace. Lord, you are the Prince of Peace. You have power over the whole earth. And Lord, I'm asking that you would be patient, that you would be long-suffering. Lord, that you would tarry your return and your wrath. Lord, I ask that you would give us time to go out and get the lost saved so that they might trust in you as the one and only Christ. Lord, thank you for saving me. I'm forever indebted. 
Lord, I pray that